Pianists often ask, is it better to practice scales slowly or fast? And of course, it's good to practice both. Slow scales are good for a beautiful cantabile sound, for listening, for awareness of the movement, for evenness and legato. But of course, that isn't going to teach you to play really fast and fluently, so we need to practice fast scales as well. And one of the most important things with a fast scale is to have the mental preparation. The brain always needs to be one step ahead. So we, before we start to play the scale, we really need familiarity with the key signature, knowing what the scale looks like on the keyboard, how it feels under the hand. Because any mental stress about what note is coming next is going to lead to physical tension as well. Now, when I introduce a faster scale, what I like to think about is that it's not individual fingers playing more quickly. And what I mean by that, we don't think about each finger having to move more quickly and playing in this way. Because, you see, each finger is looking quite tense. So I use a, a technique that I call the Mexican wave. Now, I'm not a football fan, um, but those of you who have been to football matches will know that sometimes what the fans do is one after the other, they put their hands down in a wave. And so across the stadium, you get this sense of a wave of all their hands go down one after the other. And so we use this idea um, with our fingers. So before I want to play five fingers really quickly, what I'm going to do is lift all the fingers and then just let them all trickle down one after the other. It's like drumming on the table. We can all do that really quickly. So if we can drum on the table really quickly, it means we can also play a scale quickly. So if I want to play five fingers in a scale, I'll just do this. And I might combine it also with a little bit of a parachute. And you see how easy it is to play fast. The fingers don't have to work any more strongly, any more quickly than they would have done in any other way. So when we're playing a scale a little bit more quickly, it's not really our fingers that have to move more quickly, it's our arm that moves a little bit more quickly. So I have this exercise, which I just call the flowing arm exercise, and we start quite slowly. And so on. So you see what was happening there? Each time I added a note, my arm had to move one note further, and so my arm started to flow a little bit more quickly. So when you're teaching faster scales, encourage the arm to move more quickly, not the fingers. So the arms take each finger into position. Think in hand position so you can move quickly up the keyboard. And it will really help if you parachute down into the first note of each group, because that will keep the wrist nice and soft. And then you'll start to feel a really beautiful flowing natural rounded movement develop in the arm. When we play a scale at a fairly steady tempo, we play it fully legato. So we join all the notes together in this way. And really make that legato. Now, when I'm playing a little bit faster, I may not have time to do that. So what you can do instead is just slide off the notes. Now, for instance, say I'm doing that B flat scale coming down. Instead of really doing a full legato here, what I will do is slide off the third finger. Do it fast because it's fast, 
the listener doesn't notice any gaps between the notes, but it means that you can keep a really smooth flowing motion. And going the opposite way, what you'll find you'll do is just slide off the thumb a little bit early. Now, it's very important not to jump off the notes so you don't do this. You just think of releasing the note just a tiny bit earlier. And because it's fast, nobody will notice the slight gap between the notes.